Good morning, everybody. Hey, uh, I've got to share with you, I've, I've had a hard time recognizing when to use the Cauchy Schwartz inequality. This this green statement right down here is Cauchy Schwartz. This fellow Leo Goldmacher has kind of a nice uh, linguistic mnemonic for it. He, he says it's the square of the sum of the products is the left hand side. You can see this, uh, the square of the sum of the products. Well, these are products, right? This is a sum and that's a square, right? So the square of the sum of the products is less than or equal to the product of the sum of the squares, which is the right hand side. Now that does have a nice kind of mnemonic linguistic ring. So I sort of like that. And, and thanks to Leo for sharing that. Now, what I'm going to show you today is something that's just helping me and a lot of you probably already know it, but I need to start simple. What I'm going to show you today is, is called the Cauchy Schwartz one trick. CS, just for short, the, the Cauchy Schwartz one trick. All right. And it, incredible, a lot of the stuff we do in so called sophisticated mathematics is just a bunch of tricks, right? So, again, this is called the Cauchy Schwartz uh, one trick. And I guess deep down, it has to do with what we call universal uh, quantifiers. Uh, this result, um, holds for all uh, real AI BIs, all real and probably all complex. So that means you can pick whatever you want. You know, it's for all, it's a universal quantifier sort of thing. So what we're supposed to do is, is prove this statement right here. The left-hand side reads B plus W plus X plus Y plus Z. I'm, I'm trying to steer clear of the subscripted variables, but I, I should get more used to them. You know, I am sort of, but anyway, I think a lot of people like just seeing the unsubscripted variables. So we're supposed to prove this result right here. Now, so again, the thing that's kind of left out here, I should put a for all AI, for all BI, for all, you know, so you can pick them. So what I did right here is judiciously pick my A's to be ones, you see, and I literally put it in. And what, what has made it hard for me to understand this is people won't write this down a lot of times. And so I don't know where the ones are coming from, but I, literally all of the A sub I's, uh, A sub I is equal to one right here. A sub I is equal to one for all I. And, and of course, our uh, our N is equal to five here. N is certainly equal to five. Now, once you buy into that, that you can use whatever you want, because one of the nice things about the Cauchy's is this, it, there's no restrictions on the variables. It could be any complex number, I think, any real number. So you, you really got a lot of carte blanche to pick what you want. And that's what I did. Each of these A sub I's is a one, 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 one. All right, now that, that is, this right here, this left-hand side is exactly this summation for n equals five, right? Notice we got it squared right here. Now, and again, this looks dumb, but I, I'm even gonna square the ones just so you'll see where it fits into the formula. So I will see where it fits into the formula. All right, so you got one squared plus one squared plus one squared. Okay, and the very next line follows, a, all of these ones certainly add up to five. Then I also took the liberty of taking the square root all in one step. So we take the square root of both sides, the square goes away, and then you got this truth right here. So this is what we set out to prove. This is, we're, we're at the QED phase of this, right? QED, quantum S demonstrandum or something like that. Thus we have demonstrated, okay. Proof is complete. Now, just a, just a side note here, uh, <clears throat> notice this, there's an equality right here. There's an equality. This means less than or equal to. So if we set them all, set them all equal to each other, we can use any of the variables, but I'll just write five V on the left-hand side, right? If they're all equal to each other. We could call them five V. We could call them five W. We could call them five Z, right? Now, uh, now this right-hand side here would just be root five. Okay. And then uh, times the square root of the quantity uh, five v squared, right? Now this will become the square. So this is equal to when you pull the square root of five out, you're just going to get five, right? Square root. Uh, v squared 
And of course, that is equal. Take the square root of that, you, you get this, right? So we've shown that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side when precisely when the uh, variables are equal to each other. I think technically it's the ratios like V over one, W over one, and so on, but that the ones go away. But in any event, folks, thanks again to Leo Goldmacher.